We're joined today by actress Lisa Wilcox. You might know her better as Alice Johnson from A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master, and A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream Child. She'll be at uh, Crypticon in Minnesota here coming up at the Crown Plaza in Plymouth, Minnesota, September 13th through the 15th. Lisa, how's it going today? Uh, okay. How, how about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, first of all, you're coming to Minnesota here for Crypticon, uh, September 13th through the 15th. Is this your first time coming uh, through Minnesota? Oh, gosh. Uh, Dustin, I'm so sorry. I just, I don't remember. I think so. I think it's my first Crypticon Minnesota trip. Oh, Dustin, I'm sorry. I just... That's okay. Can we ask another question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to say yes or no, because someone will say, oh, no, you were here three years ago, and I'm going to be like, I don't know. I don't, I be, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Well, can you talk a bit about, I guess, the overall experience for you going to uh, conventions like Crypticon? I know you've done a lot of things in your career, but I know the, uh, the fans of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, they've got to be the most passionate, I imagine. I absolutely love doing in-person conventions. I it's just the best time to see fans who come from all over and they come to my, my table and ask questions and we get to communicate in person, which is absolutely the best. I mean, I've been visiting shows for over 20 years now and it is just a wonderful experience for me and for you also see my actor friends and for all the fans out there and them sharing their stories and how Alice Johnson made an impact on their life from Nightmare 4 and 5, and it's just really uh, a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I know for the listeners out there, if you've never been to a, a convention before, a Crypticon here in Minnesota is a little different. Um, it seems more laid back, and, and there's definitely more opportunity for the fans to uh, to hang out and talk, and, and they're not kind of rushed through the lines maybe like they are at some of the bigger ones. Honestly, I really do prefer smaller shows um, because it is more intimate and I know at some of the bigger shows which I also do but the there's you know, huge names at those shows and and folks are waiting in line for six hours and then they don't even get to see that celebrity and this that and the other so you know my preference honestly are smaller shows and also doing like a screening of Nightmare 4 or 5 at an independent theater and I've done some amazing experiences like in Ohio and um, Indiana and visiting these nostalgic cinemas. And it, it could just be me and Danny Hassel, for instance, or and whatnot. So I think it's a more true experience for everybody. And of course, a lot of big fans of Nightmare on Elm Street and and as you mentioned, you survived through two of the films. Uh, that's unheard of, I think, in any horror franchise, not, not just Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, it is an unusual circumstance, actually. <laughs> and there was a time I went, gosh darn, I never got my death scene. Gosh darn. And then I went, hold on, a light bulb went off, and I went, oh, Alice lives. Alice lives <laughs> through the horror of it all. Well, can you talk a bit about your experience making uh, Dream Master and, and Dream Child? I know by that point, uh, the franchise was huge, and Freddy Krueger was everywhere. That must have been uh, pretty exciting that early into your career. Well, here's the thing. I've always been a horror fan since I was knee-high, and so to be- become part of a Nightmare on Elm Street I, 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 epic, I mean... It was kind of a, it was a dream come true, honestly. And, but also the character of Alice Johnson, you know, I related to her so much and got the, got the role. And what can I say? It's like being an actor, performer, you know, we can, you know, change our own lives and, and change others too. You know, we're, we'll represent something to a person and, that's kind of the beauty and fun of being an artist, quite frankly, whether you're a painter or a writer or an actor or whatever. And it did seem like that was a, probably a, a, a physical role for you. Uh, I mean, you did a lot of stunts and you had to know Kung Fu and everything. I mean, I imagine that was pretty grueling. <laughs> uh, well, 
uh, yeah, I had done gymnastics in high school, so I could start the stuff, like the church fight stuff and all that. But there were Olympiads who were my stunt doubles. You know, one day, a few, several days in a row, there'd be like five Alice's walking around in the same leather jacket and the ripped <laughs> jeans and that whole thing. So anyway, so it was probably more grueling for them on wires and things like that. Um, if I knew how to do that stuff, I would. But I did learn um, some nunchuck, you know, skills and, and whatnot. Um, but again, had an amazing stunt double. Like when you see the front of me, yes, that's me. Okay. When you see the back of me, that's a stunt double. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it all works. Movie magic. Well, and as we mentioned, the you uh, were the rare one to live through uh, both movies. W- was there ever talk of you coming back for part six? Do you know, or, or was that ever something that maybe you would be interested in? I, I would have been interested, but nope, never was brought up. They just went on a whole different tangent. So, and I don't believe it's due to my performance. Um, they just decided to go a different way. Well, I think the biggest question I have for you as far as, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, were you ever able to uh, hang out with the Fat Boys uh, during their their music video? No, I never met them. <laughs> I never even met them. I know it comes up on my IMDb, and I'm like, okay, I have a credit there, but I, I never met them. I never hung out with them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, uh, Lisa Wilcox will be coming to Minnesota here for Crypticon September 13th through the 15th, and you've done so many other things in your career uh, besides Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, you've been part of the Star Trek universe and boy meets world. And I remember the bill and Ted series. I mean, you've done a little bit of everything that the, the fans uh, could come and talk to you about. Well, it honestly, to this day, it cracks me up. Cause I know I known for horror specifically a nightmare in Elm street. But if you actually look at IMDb, my resume and stuff, it's like sitcoms and episodic and dramas and soap operas and all kinds of stuff. But believe me, I'm very thrilled <clears throat> to be part of the Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, my family. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like you've always been kind of keeping one foot in the horror genre. Was that because of the success of Nightmare on Elm Street? Or, you know, as you mentioned, you were a fan of horror films. Do you just kind of maybe gravitate more towards those kind of roles? Uh, I, I'm an actor. I audition. I I book roles in all kinds of genres. Um, I think it's kind of a just an interesting synchronicity of my love of Dracula and Frankenstein and the good old black and whites and going forward from that. I don't know. It's like God's way of being anonymous, I guess you could say, um, that this is where I am. And the thing is, I loved acting for a very long time. I was married and had children and all that good stuff. And I was a mom and then got back into acting not too long ago. And the thing is, so many of the of the kids that watched A Nightmare on Elm Street in the 80s have grown up to be directors and writers and producers. And they were inspired by Nightmare on Elm Street. They were inspired by the character, Alice Johnson. And so now, you know, they ask me, Lisa, I have this film and here's the script. Would you do it? You know, kind of thing. So pretty awesome. It's definitely the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, it's great to see that you're uh, getting back into things. And I wanted to ask you a bit about that, what what you're working on now. Are there any upcoming roles maybe we should be watching out for? Um, well, it's, it's interesting. A friend of mine said, you know, you can look up your name, Lisa Wilcox, and just type it in the search, like on Amazon Prime or Hulu or whatever. There's like eight things streaming right now that you all can watch. So uh, <laughs> Seance and the Queen's... Um, Oh, gosh, there's this mystery spot, uh, Don't Suck, with Jamie Kennedy, comedian. I just There's a whole slew of things you all can see. And I'm really excited about a film I did that is not horror-related, actually, called What Happened to Dorothy Bell, and it was selected to be at the film festival in Austin, Texas, uh, this month. So I'll be out there doing that, play a psychiatrist and, and whatnot. So anyway, there's a lot of Lisa Wilcox stuff floating around out there, just just do the search. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, definitely. Again, looking forward to seeing you here at uh, Crypticon. And I know a lot of other people from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, um, I think three, four, and five especially are going to be here as well. So it's kind of like a kind of like a class reunion for you in a way. It definitely is. I, w- I was looking at the website and I went, oh my gosh, my dress is going to be there. Oh, yay. 
So, yeah, it's going to be a great time. I can't wait to meet you all in Minnesota and uh, come on down. Come say hi. Excellent. Is there anything else maybe coming up or anything else we should be watching out for? I, with, because things haven't come out yet, I can't, I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> so, sure. um, but yeah, there's a whole, whole slew of things um, that I'm filming. And, and in fact, starting Sunday, I'm going to be on the road filming. Also, of course, Minnesota is in that two and a half months of um, flying around, meeting folks and, and filming until the middle of November. So thank you so much. Love the work. Wonderful. Lisa, it's been great speaking with you. And I wanted to thank you again for your time. And I know you're very busy and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you here at Crypticon. Thank you again so much. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you for your patience. And again, that was Lisa Wilcox from A Nightmare in Elm Street, Part 4 and 5. She's coming to Crypticon here in Minnesota, September 13th through the 15th at the Crown Plaza in Plymouth, Minnesota. Go to CryptoconMinneapolis.com for more info.